It's Monday. It's January 30th. And the word of the day is pantophobia. It's a term from the 19th century, which means a fear of absolutely everything. Used in a sentence, the only thing we have to fear is pantophobia itself. <laughs> okay, see, that's very different from pantophobia, which is the fear of a 1980s high school bully mm-hmm. exposing your underwear. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Although, it's obviously, different. that's that's <laughs> encompassed within pantophobia. Right, yeah, it's one yeah, of the set of sets. Uh, it's ni- nice to know, though, that I can sum up Fox News' business model in 11 letters now. That's awesome. <laughs> that's fun. I'm no illusions. I'm Michael Marshall. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, the United States addresses the balance of trade with Brazil by exporting insane insurrections. Ron DeSantis continues trying to make it illegal to learn how racist he is. And Tucker Carlson tells us about the dangers of M&Ms and the power of cigarettes. That fucking guy. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Michael Marshall. Gentlemen. Before we get started with the news, do you guys want to say something nice about Eli Bosnick while he's gone? Um, he was polite enough to wait until I got out of the car before he reversed into a baby. <laughs> that, that was <laughs> nice of him. It's polite. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good one, Marsh. In our lead story tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Eli, you're a great father and your son is lucky to have you. There you go. He's not going to listen to this shit anyway. In our lead story tonight, in a roundabout way... Uh, My younger sister is a history professor and is occasionally called upon to teach a freshman World History 101 class. And when she does, the first thing she does, day one, is she'll lead the class in in a discussion with the topic, what does the term Western civilization mean? And then through a dialectical method, she eventually guides the class to the realization that that's the polite term for white people history. Oh, that's a great way to start that class. Right? And then... Invariably, her students spend a second coming to grips with the fact that we've been hiding a term for white people history right under their noses in their schools the whole fucking time. And and I open with that because I feel like that realization is kind of prerequisite to being sufficiently outraged at the latest move from fucking Grand Dragon Ron DeSantis of the Ku Klux Klan old party to block an advanced placement course on African American studies from public high schools in Florida. Right, because that would be racist to have that class. Yes. Anyway, here's the new globes for geography with the racist parts redacted in black. <laughs> <laughs> It's just America and Northern Europe. So so here's an idea. Can we not get your sister Noah to do a what does this term mean on Republican Party as well? Because <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure that's going to come out as white people party as well. Yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> so yeah. So this course apparently ran afoul of DeSantis's signature Stop Woke Act, which bars the acknowledgement of any part of history that makes America look like the bad guy. Uh, sorry, the acknowledgement of any part of history, period. History, sure, yeah. Yeah, sorry for the earlier redundancy. <laughs> hey, no, come on. There were times in history where America wasn't the bad guys. Mm. Admittedly, it was the times before you were America, but oh, nevertheless, those times yeah. exist. No, back when we hang, like hanged people for witchcraft. That's the times, yeah. <laughs> anyway, in a press conference announcing the ban, DeSantis claimed the course, which is in use in 60 high schools all over the fucking country, pushes a political agenda. Uh, that political agenda being, of course, that black people are, that black people are, <laughs> and, yeah. and were, right? So even worse. That is an agenda. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We're pushing that. Right. But even worse, queer black people are and were. Here's an actual quote from DeSantis. Quote, the course on black history, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? That is, somebody pushing an agenda, end quote. Because apparently the answer, queer black people didn't occur to him. No. Okay, it's just people, Noah. It's just people. Ron DeSantis <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> doesn't see words, <laughs> adjectives. <laughs> You're being a bigot. So I think what you're forgetting is that education is just inherently woke. Like anything other than ignorance is downright anti-American. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. So incidentally, by the way, I, DeSantis was engaged in a subtle misdirection in that quote that I feel like we should acknowledge. He described it as a course on black history, but that's not entirely accurate. 
History is a major component of it, but this is actually an interdisciplinary course that draws on a number of different topics under the umbrella of African American studies. And and, and, I, and I think that distinction matters because of the way that it's being attacked in conservative media, right? Because they'll say like, well, why does a history course need a lesson on this or that political theory? And the answer is because part of this is political science. Right, not and not some nefarious plot to turn your kids into trans rainbows of wokeness or whatever fucking nightmare animates Florida conservatives. But even if that wasn't the case, even if this was just a history course, that'd be fine. Politics is part of history. Politics Thank is you. the why behind the what happened. It's really important to know. Like you can't understand the Cold War without first knowing what the word communism means. Right. Actually, it's America. You can get really fucking far by specifically not knowing what <laughs> communism means. Well, yeah, actually. That, <laughs> you get elected on that alone. Yeah, lots of things happen during the word history. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, in fact, some of them were political. Yeah, so... Ronnie D, are you seriously worried about this, though? Are you really worried that ignorant white kids in Florida are going to just, like, trip and fall into the AP African-American history? (laughs) (laughs) Ignorant white kids can go to Harvard and Yale with very useful non-white information everywhere available to them and still end up ignorant pieces of shit. You're the poster boy for that. That's you. I just described you're the poster proud boy of that concept. (laughs) Ignorant white Republicans, you're not going anywhere until the purge. So just relax. <laughs> can, wait, can poster Proud Boys tear their own posters? That's the interesting question, right? Just anyway, got to get it started. Anyway, so really good poster. DeSantis' administration released this stupid chart on Friday detailing all the ways that the AP course ran afoul of Florida's law. And it's fucking ridiculous. It's It's got a list of six topics from the course, uh, along with the issues that they have with those topics. It's stuff like the following critique of a module on reparations. Quote, all points and resources in this study advocate for reparations. There is no critical perspective of balancing opinion in this lesson. End quote. And this one with the, for the uh, module on movements for black lives, quote, movements for black lives is an organization with stated. First of all, it's not a fucking organization. It's a group of organizations with stated objectives that include concluding the war on black, trans, queer, gender, nonconforming and intersex people. End quote. What? Like, for, presumably without including a balancing opinion on why that war should be continued. I don't fucking know. Yeah, what would that be? That's insane. Okay. Right. But but most of it is just like the suggested reading in this section includes a communist. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Th- that balancing opinion idea is crazy for both. Just circling back. He's cool with a unit on reparations if there's also the opposite yes. viewpoint in there. Yes. A- about debts to white people? <laughs> what yes. the fuck are you talking about? Okay, well, yeah, centuries of unpaid labor in this column. Yeah, no, 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 that's true. But let's be fair. Uh, free boat tickets across the Atlantic oh, right Jesus over here Christ. on this column. So, <laughs> so I, I see a fucking tie. It's balanced. That's tied. <laughs> yeah, no. just the, the teachers be like, okay, students, so today for balance, we're going to be learning about how hard it was to run a cotton farm profitably in 1866. Yes, right. <laughs> And onwards. Nobody wants to work anymore. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with these people? Now, now, fortunately, there's been a lot of pushback on this. A prominent civil rights attorney, Ben Crump, is threatening to sue the state on behalf of three students if the decision isn't reversed. A Florida voting rights advocacy group held a Stop the Black Attack rally in Tallahassee over the weekend. And Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker released a scathing statement calling on the college board to ignore pressure from DeSantis's racist-ass administration. I wanted to quote this from, the, uh, from Pritzker's statement, quote, I urge you to maintain your reputation as an academic institution dedicated to the advancement of students and refuse to bow to political pressure that would ask you to rewrite our nation's true, if sometimes unpleasant, history. One governor should not have the power to dictate the facts of U.S. history, end quote. Not adding that's for presidents. Uh, But but perhaps an even (laughs) harsher condemnation has come from academia, right? Like the Yale professor of women's, genders, and sexuality studies condemned on their silly chart for daring to suggest that queerness shouldn't include a form of social surrender, uh, who pointed out that the history they're trying to erase as non-existent is the history of the shit that they're doing to erase it. 
Yeah, absolutely. So they're like, also, you know, don't teach kids about us stopping you teaching kids about history. Yes, and right. Don't don't <laughs> right. teach them about this sentence right now where I'm telling you not to teach them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and that. And that. <laughs> fuck. It was also what I liked uh, from a UCLA prof- history professor that they condemned on their chart for having written an award-winning book on Depression-era communism amongst black Alabamans, uh, who simply said that the book was, quote, Based on thorough research, something DeSantis's people are not familiar with, end quote. <laughs> okay, I feel like the big takeaway here is that Yale and Harvard need to fix their fucking curriculum. Yeah. If Ron DeSantis can be a product of your system, you're doing it wrong. You're systeming for sure. wrong. Yes, exactly. But, but I think the most telling quote I found came from a high school teacher in New York who's actually teaching the course that DeSantis is banning. She told the Associated Press, quote, there's nothing objectionable. It's history that hasn't traditionally been taught in the United States in a K-12 through setting, but it's also history that once known and understood could change race relations and improve them, end quote. Terrifying. And therein lies the problem. Right. That's the problem. DeSantis knows that any effort to reduce racism in America is a de facto effort to reduce his electability. The, 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 The fact that this story is breaking on the eve of every racist in America going, well, how come there isn't a white history month then? Probably not a coincidence. Okay, removing racism might help him in the primary, at least. But yeah, not, <laughs> not in right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and in thank you for being a friend news, that's the Golden Girls. That's nice. Oh, like the United it. States yeah, is joining with Germany, the UK, and France to send military tanks to Ukraine in hopes of regaining the territory that's been lost to the invasion by Russia, and of course, defending against any future attacks. Germany and some other European states are sending a batch of German-made Leopard 2 tanks. The UK is sending 14 of their Challenger 2s. And Joe Biden just agreed to supply 31 of our M1 Abrams tanks. Uh, Also, France is sending AMX-10 armored fighting vehicles. So uh, almost tanks. They're helping, (laughs) too. Yes, you are, France. Yes, you are. And overall, this, this is good. It represents, I would say, a positive inflection point in tangible military support from NATO allies. Japan just shows up with a bunch of extra hit points. Sorry, sorry, we misunderstood the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> so the big takeaway here, it's the fact that our M1 Abrams tanks are the best fucking ones. It's, they're the great <laughs> USA, yeah. USA. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. the important takeaway. And, and they're a bargain, you know, costing just, what is it, 80% of your whole federal budget? Yeah, absolutely worth it. What? USA, <laughs> USA. <laughs> So these tanks, they are pretty amazing, actually. They're so advanced, they're, <laughs> they're a giant pain in the ass to operate yeah. without experience because of how advanced they are. So we're also sending a team of, like, overbearing fathers to give driving <laughs> lessons in Ukraine. <laughs> also, apparently they run on, I read that they run on jet fuel. Like, what the fuck is Do that? They really? That sounds yeah. dangerous. Uh-huh. <laughs> so the Ukrainian military estimated that 300 tanks would be great right now. Instead, it's going to be, well, way less than that, Mm. and eventually Mm. after shipping and after a few months of training. But at least it's a step in the right direction after such a long hesitation from NATO to help with specifically tanks, which is the one big thing that Ukraine has been asking for. Right, yeah, because Ukraine was the kid at Christmas opening every present from its foreign cousins, hoping it's going to be a tank, and it was just another pair of socks over and over again. Right, Right. and the the excuse for not sending tanks to me was just silly. Right, like all the Ukrainian allies were like, well, you know, it's like big ass tanks, so that that might piss off Putin. And then he'll what? <laughs> right? Like, you know, oh, he might start invading bordering nations unprovoked and mass kill civilians. He might threaten to use nukes. He might sneak shirtless equestrian pictures of himself into other people's hotel rooms. He's doing that <laughs> shit already. Just send the fucking tanks. Naked on a horse is next, and that's what we're preventing. <laughs> all right, well, bring the. Weird. Yeah, that's fair. That's reasonable. <laughs> bring back the yeah. tanks. <laughs> okay. So here's what I'm really hoping for. I'm really hoping the change of heart from NATO was a reaction to the greatest social media post of all time. (laughs) Whoever's in charge of Twitter for Ukraine's Ministry of Defense deserves a medal of honor for this. It's amazing. Their official account is at defense U with a C in defense. And along with a video, they tweeted, Western countries are so worried about sending tanks to Ukraine They're arguing about what is and what is not a tank. We offer our humble suggestion. 
And the video starts with some text that says, we hear you. We have a solution. And then Bob Seeger comes in like a rock. And they start doing that old commercial for Chevy pickup trucks. Oh, truck, nice. Except with tanks. <laughs> and it says, introducing the all new M1A2 Abrams recreational utility vehicle. And a tank is just like crashing through a field. <laughs> and a bunch of horses run by. There's a slow motion Boy Scout waving the American flag. It's the fucking best. And then it ends with a bunch of clips of the tanks just blowing up everything near them because they can do that. And then there's one more shot of wild horses running out of nowhere. Yep. And then it says, because the best things made in America shouldn't stay in America. The thing is, it is weird that this was someone's job during the war, isn't it? Right. Like, how did you contribute in the great fight against Russia, Papa? Well, Olexi, back in the day, there was a thing called doing numbers. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Because Bob Seeger, you don't remember? Lager. Yeah, whatever. You're, you're too young. <laughs> so I am not too young. As a child of the 90s who grew up watching these commercials all the time, I think they started in 91 and went all the way. They did versions all the way through like 2013. Oh, wow. I watched those all the time. This was extremely nostalgic for me, even though I hate everything it represents about America. Because if you base your historical understanding of the 90s on TV commercials – and I do, our entire country was just driving around oversized pickup trucks for absolutely no reason and throwing big piles of dirt in the bed in the back of the truck and, and then driving over to somebody's big pit that just got created because that second person was doing the exact same thing and you just pass each other on the road being like, dirt pile, cool. Yeah, so it's just like a sand pit for grown-ups. It's just to toxic masculinity sandcastles is what this is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So weird. And everybody's wearing Wrangler jeans. They fit real nice on your ass and smoking Marlboro Reds with no consequences. You got a soft pack of them. I, who has soft packs? And you're throwing bales of hay to each other in slow motion. There's a guy with like a recent eye injury just sitting in the bed of the truck. He's got a big <laughs> thing over it. Giant packs of feral horses. They're always running next to you. I don't know where they come from, but they're always running next to you. And then you're taking your truck up a giant ramp with flamethrowers on it. I don't. It was a decade of nothing but this nonsense. I, I don't understand. And then 9/11. So that was that was the end of that. <laughs> so anyway, we sent him tanks. Uh, if I was Biden though, and I didn't already help, this tweet would have super duper worked on me. Great job by at defense you amazing i loved it but i just i want to be clear that all that farm shit was the stuff that heath and his redneck family were doing my family we were <laughs> was more sophisticated we spent that decade rolling ball bearings around our luxury <laughs> <Okay. laughs> having a little gray poop on. that was the dumbest thing in the world and i it was sexy as fuck for some reason i don't know why how so are we gonna sell this lexus marble <laughs> madness <laughs> what <laughs> And in disinformation news tonight, no, the goddamn core of the goddamn earth did not pause nor stop nor reverse <laughs> goddamn direction. That the, would be insane. The sun isn't rising in the West. Aaron Eckhart isn't teaming up with Hillary Swank and Delroy Lindo. <laughs> and Lois Lane isn't coming back to goddamn life because the goddamn idea that the goddamn core of the goddamn Earth, a mass of mostly nickel and iron the size of fucking Mars, could suddenly start reversing direction back and forth as though a galactic DJ was getting Ricky Ricky <laughs> raw with it. It's a 101 <laughs> physics level. Nah. -uh. It's but just that rolling around different directions on top of a Lexus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but no, what happened? The absolute impossibility of it did not stop news agencies all over the world from radically misinterpreting some kind of cool data to craft headlines like CNN's Earth's inner core may have stopped turning and could go into reverse, study suggests. Or, CNN? Yes, or I fucking love Come science's on. even more egregious Earth's inner core recently paused then flipped its direction. Ooh. <laughs> And then the Flat Earth Gazette, we're doing a combination lock thing, and the Earth Puck might open. 
So that's exciting. The thing is, I fucking love science made it sound like the Earth just like went the wrong way down the street and was trying to style it out. Like, right. oh, I assume the Earth like patted its pockets to pretend it forgot its wallet and was going back for it or maybe pretended to get a phone call right, from Mars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, yeah, look, with all due recognition that I'm about as far from a physicist as you could possibly be without moving to the 16th century, that is not at all what happened. What scientists really found, according to the scientists that found it anyway, is that the rate that the inner core spins may have slightly decreased since the 1960s, uh, with with emphasis both on the may and the slightly. Rate decrease was backwards Going yes. in their head. <laughs> right, yeah. No, so wow. the, the difference between the spin of the Earth and its core, uh, if there is one, is on the tune of like one-tenth of one degree of rotation per year. And the news is that there may have been change within that difference, right? But since that doesn't include any implications of impending doom at the hands of supernatural catastrophes, headline writers decided to use clickbait instead. Okay, so they're picturing like two people running together and the actual thing that happened is maybe one person slowed down a little compared to the other person and kept going right. in the same direction, both of them. And the headlines were like, this guy turned around, sprinted towards somebody else behind us and punched him in the fucking face. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> More or less, yeah. So to, now to explain what's actually going on here, we've got to start with the core of the Earth. And I should preempt this with the reminder that the core of the Earth is some 2,900 kilometers below the surface. That's 1,800 miles. Or uh, 1,564 nautical miles for uh, for our listeners at sea. Right, yeah. <laughs> 1.58 million fathoms, I believe that is. Yeah, so it's, anyway, so the deepest hole we've ever dug is about 7 kilometers. The, the core is 2,900 kilometers. A lot of speculation is what I'm saying that goes into figuring out what's going on at the center of the planet. But scientists are clever as all fuck, so they figure out ways to measure stuff like reverberations of earthquakes that have gone all the way through the planet and through the core, and they can make some pretty informed guesses about what's going on down there. And one of those guesses is the one I mentioned earlier about how the core is actually spinning a little bit faster than the planet itself. Right, but of course it's going faster. It's, it's got the inside lane. That's always right. going quicker. <laughs> CNN breaking news, you can dig a ditch into the future now. It's <laughs> the future. Now, if you think about it, this shit makes sense, right? So the, the metallic core is suspended in a molten layer, so it's entirely possible that it could spin at a slightly different rate, but the, but the theory that it's spinning faster isn't universally accepted. Again, I'm not a scientist, I'm not qualified to weigh in, even on how controversial the idea is, but it's not the only explanation for the data. And this new bit... Uh, the one that the headlines are misreporting, is an addendum to that theory. It comes from seismologists Yi Yang and Zhao Dong Song at Peking University in Beijing via the journal Nature Geoscience, and Song actually led the team that first proposed this theory back in 96. Well, now he and his team are saying that since their measurements leading up to 96, the difference either slowed or stopped. That, it, that is, the rate of the cores and the crust's rotation even to back out. But but to get to data suggests the inner core stopped rotating faster than the rest of the planet, you have to go through data suggests the inner core stopped rotating. <laughs> and apparently that's as far as a lot of the headline writers were willing to go. But this is why journalists have to pay for a full subscription. They can't just rely on the bit of the headline that you get to see with the free trial. <laughs> data right. suggests the inner core stopped rotating. Well, I assume those dot, dot, dots are just there for dramatic effect. I assume that's what that means. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's it's a kind of interesting story, I guess, especially in what it reveals about how geoscience is done. But, like... Yeah, pretty much every expert I saw quoted in a story about this shared something along the lines of, yeah, we don't know what the fuck is going on down there. And just when we think we figured something out, new data tells us to go fuck ourselves. But it's not a story about the Earth changing directions or the Earth's <laughs> core changing directions. And the fact that literally anyone in any country can think otherwise for any amount of time is a testament to just how much we under-prioritize scientific education. Marsh, did you hear anything from Flat Earthers about this? Are they freaking out because of what they picture? <laughs> oh, I've not checked. I need to. I'll get in my uh, my Flat Earth Telegram group and see what I find out. But oh, yeah, right is now the Earth doing yet. like a Game of Thrones intro theme thing <laughs> with like the spinniness? <laughs> and in in August, badly news. Thousands of deluded and aggressive right-wing voters hopped upon conspiracy theories and whipped up into a violent mob, stormed the capital in an attempt to stop a transfer of power to the incoming president earlier this month in Brazil. Uh, guys, I've, 
I've got to ask, how does it feel to see the American form of democracy embraced by other cultures? This is exciting, <laughs> okay. right? Okay. Just because your UK version of deluded and aggressive right-wing voters hopped up on conspiracy theories are MPs when they storm the Capitol <laughs> and they do that like every few days and get a new prime minister. That doesn't mean you're not stealing ideas from American democracy. Thank you're welcome. You. Okay. No, that's fair. That is fair. We still gave you some. Uh, so this Brazilian mob decided to put the Rio into riot. I, I love you too, Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva won the national election in October, replacing the former president and chilling vision of what Carl Sagan's corpse currently looks like, Jair <laughs> Bolsonaro. <laughs> and because their boy Bolsonaro really earns his nickname as the Brazilian Trump, the insurrectionist crowd gathered in a successful attempt to storm the state capital in Brasilia. Now, so to be clear here, he's talking about the Brazilian Trump, not the Trump Brazilian, uh, which is where you wax away all the hair above the shaft and then you comb your ball hair over to make it look <laughs> like it's still there. <laughs> Very different thing. Don't ask for one when you mean the other. Then you spray it orange and bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so Brazil's riot came one week after the formality of Lula's inauguration and just a few days after the second anniversary of the January 6th riots in the US, all of which made it the most telling contribution of a late arriving Brazilian right wing since Carlos Alberto's 1970 World Cup final goal. <laughs> And uh, in fairness, there's quite a few similarities. Uh, both involved a long build-up and a host of key players. Both ended in the defence being broken through. Uh, but at least this time, we can be certain that Pele wasn't involved at all. Wow. <laughs> Too soon, Marsh. Here's the thing, though. If Hugo Chavez helped rig that voting, then I feel like Pele could have easily been involved, no, too. That's fair. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Bolsonaro, of course, was one of the main drivers of this insurrection. But it seems like the Brazilian police also played a pretty key role in enabling all this carnage, with officers, when they were seen taking selfies with rioters and leaving key points of entry completely unguarded. And the extent of the resistance by the police was basically telling the mob, Obrigar don't. <laughs> okay. It's Portuguese for... Thank you, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so it's no thank Somewhere, you. there's a wingback soccer player living in the UK. He speaks Portuguese, and he is loving this goddamn episode. So <laughs> narrow <laughs> <too> much. <laughs> Joao Cancelo is loving this episode, is what I'm saying. Are you friends with him? You have to tell us. Is that what you're doing? Uh, so meanwhile, I'm just I'm over here not knowing what the fuck is going on for a minute and a half and, and realizing why Eli has to rely on funny voices so often. <laughs> So in top of the internal support for the insurrection, it was all this whole thing was also stuck by some pretty familiar external faces from insurrections gone by, like former Trump strategist and probable vision of what Joseph Mengele's drowned corpse currently looks like right now, <laughs> Steve Bannon. Yeah, Steve, he looks crazier and crazier every time. Right now, I'd say he looks like an Acme cigar always just blew up in his face for the last like yes. several years yeah so you let me I, i'm actually gonna ramp that up he looks like if an acme exploding cigar accidentally fell in love with its intended mark and then they had a baby <laughs> and he grew up and he got old and then an acme cigar blew up in his face <laughs> that's steve bannon yeah that's fair so so bannon's been talking up conspiracy theories about the brazilian uh, brazilian election as far back as october and he was involved in promoting the hashtag brazilian spring which while it sounds like a scheduled reminder for a grooming appointment uh, <laughs> was actually an attempt to get people to reject the election results. do you know they do the butthole in those i, lo I looked do it they? up the other day i was like all right what's what exactly is that oh my god that's terrifying <laughs> The okay. butthole. <laughs> wax. They wax it. I, I feel like once you're doing that to any part of that, that whole region, it's it's equal levels of terrifying. It doesn't go further more than that. All right, yeah. You're saying just go for it at that point. Yeah. Once you're already that far in, you're already committed. You might as well okay. go the whole hog. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll make some appointments um, for us. I just I'm I'm impressed that I, like because now Marsh has to transition back to his story, and I'm yeah. just I'm excited to see how that happens. Speaking of Brazilian buttholes. Bolsonaro. <laughs> that's, oh, good. that's good. That yeah, is no. good. <laughs> so yeah, Bolsonaro's team even visited the US in order to get tips directly from the mastermind behind Trump's failed insurrection. Because if you're going to encourage treason, you have to learn from the best. Yeah. Yeah, and those people really appreciate visitors right now. There's not much else. <laughs> <laughs> Pen pals maybe. But 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 here's the thing though, they they failed. 
right? Like yeah. this is the, that's the most amazing thing. The Brazilian rioters act like like you know putting their feet up on Pelosi's desk and shitting in AOC's cupboards or whatever was the end goal all along. <laughs> oh God, absolutely, yeah. How should we hide classified nuclear documents in your opinion? What do you think's good for that? <laughs> Jesus, it's fine. Those weren't there anyway. They were in Mar-a-Lago. There was none of those in the capital <laughs> at, at the time they stormed in. The Brazilian authorities have moved swiftly to investigate the insurrection, and they've already started proceedings to charge more than 1,200 people, including top officials like Bolsonaro himself. So, you know, at least America's still got a few things they can learn from their Latin American cousins. Oh, uh, <laughs> we do. And finally tonight, Tucker Carlson oh, so continued helped. being very confused about the big recording box pointed at him in his Fox News television studio, but he still managed to bewilderedly squint his way through some more episodes of Tucker Carlson tonight. (laughs) And that means it's time for another segment of Tuck Your Face. Today, we'll be talking about two very important geopolitical issues. Tucker is a very serious journalist, so of course, he recently Mm -hmm. covered the neurological enlightenment powers of smoking cigarettes, and of course, the dire need for a cartoon candy mascot with an ectomorphic body type that pleases him personally sexually. I just, (laughs) ever since the ball tanning thing, I've been working under the assumption that he's trying to thwart this segment personally (laughs) by moving beyond the realm of potential exaggeration, right? Like, like, if I leave him nowhere to go, I have to drive off the fucking road. seriously reported that ball tanning (laughs) would increase your virility and manliness? Is that that what he did? Yep. That's what he did. Okay, so let's start with the very literal pro-cigarettes hot take from the most watched TV news anchor in the country who thinks ball tanning increases male virility. So the whole thing from Carlson was a response to bans on flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes. That's already happened in California and Massachusetts, and the FDA recommended a nationwide ban last year. Part of the reasoning is that people are less likely to start smoking, especially as teenagers, when added flavors aren't part of the appeal. Well, according to Tucker, buying a cigarette of any kind with any flavor is a human right, and you can't take it away. I think he read that in... Uh, I forget, Locke or Rousseau. I can't remember back when it was. It was one of those. Yeah, no, I think it was when uh, John Stuart Mill was caught exercising a liberty, so James Mill made him exercise a whole pack of them as a punishment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wait, can, can we just acknowledge how batshit it is that the FDA just got around to officially saying that cigarettes shouldn't come in minty fresh? Just now, yeah. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right, like, like, as a person who grew up with Joe Camel telling me about the sweet leather jacket I could earn with enough Camel cash, <laughs> I see how it doesn't jump out at everybody, but it should. Yeah. No offering Harrier jets when you buy enough cigarettes either. <laughs> we should just have these rules already. So you're probably thinking, what the fuck are you talking about, Tucker Carlson? <laughs> Don't worry. He explained. The whole thing is a conspiracy by them. And uh, Mm. them is the secret cabal who hates tobacco and loves THC. Huh. So, Noah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Just to be clear, tobacco companies are pouring billions of dollars into the legal marijuana industry. They're making money on both. This is dumb. Uh, Right. So, according to Tucker's theory... Them is fighting themselves in some sort of conspiratorial self-fight or Boris of tobacco THC. (laughs) And that's nonsense, as usual, from Tucker. But it gets worse. From there, Tucker continued, quote, Why do they hate tobacco? Ooh, ooh, I've got my hand up. I've got my hand up. (laughs) It's not because it causes cancer. Oh, uh, okay, putting it back down again. Yeah, yeah, hands down, hands down. You're not going to be able to predict what the fuck he says. (laughs) 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 He continues... They don't care about your health. They hate nicotine. They love THC. Why do they hate nicotine? Because nicotine frees your mind. 
and THC <laughs> makes you compliant and passive. That's why. And exact quote. Seriously, he said, nicotine frees your mind. And, and THC makes you compliant and passive. Has he forgotten that weed was illegal in most places until incredibly recently, but <laughs> loads of people smoked it anyway? Yeah. Yes. But I guess they just broke that law in a passive and compliant <laughs> way. <laughs> Right, no, no, I'll, I'll never forget the first time a hippie handed me a joint and said, go ahead, man, passively comply. <laughs> or maybe, maybe it was free your mind. It was one or the other, but, but wait, but, but, but cigarettes free your mind? Yeah, he said that. Does, does he mean like of the burden? Yeah. Right. I mean, eventually. Of oxygen and you have a stroke is what I meant. <laughs> right, yeah, that's there you go. Yeah, right that's there. one. Yeah, and that brings us to the next thing that Tucker reported on, the long-standing feud between Tucker himself and chocolate cartoon characters. He's so fucking oh, dumb. He sure He's is. He's fucking dumb. He's actually losing a fight to chocolate cartoon characters. <laughs> <laughs> the feud's not going well for him. It started about a year ago when the M&M's branding team decided to slightly change the footwear on two of their cartoon mascots. That was a big deal to Tucker. The green M&M took off her go-go boots and started wearing sneakers. And the brown M&M went from high heels to slightly less high heels. And Tucker Carlson God. was not having it. He complained, nope. <laughs> quote, M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. End exact quote. He's real insane. Quote. I'm not sexually aroused by cartoon circles with legs anymore. What the fuck? <laughs> you have to fix it, Mars. <laughs> fix that, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> insane. And he added that he would no longer want to have a drink with those lady chocolates, presumably because their footwear is no longer sexual enough for him on his lady chocolates. Amazing. Tucker, Tucker, the reason that M&Ms are covered by shells, it's not to make them wipe clean. You know, cut oh, <laughs> Dude, stop it. <laughs> okay, so that was absurd. That was absurd. But the feud died down for most of last year after that happened. But then Tucker heard about the addition of a new purple mascot, and he had another freak out. Last week, Carlson started a segment on his national news show in a complete panic, yelling, woke M&Ms have returned. He's all angry. He continued, the green one got her boots back, but apparently is now a lesbian, maybe? And oh my what? God, this is amazing. A chocolate disc doesn't like him, so it's probably a lesbian chocolate disc in his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He continued, there's also a plus size obese purple M&M. So we're going to cover that because that's what we do. And just be clear, listeners, when he says, because that's what we do, that wasn't self-awareness or regret no, about life choices. No. It sounds like it should have been, but it definitely wasn't. <laughs> nope. And for the sake of our younger listeners who weren't around for Jerry Falwell Sr.'s apoplectic denunciation of Tinky Winky, I, I should point out that Carlson's actually continuing a storied tradition of conservative voices losing their shit over the sexuality of fictional purple characters. Yeah, so, yeah. he is. That. Okay, long tradition. So couple of important takeaways here. First of all, I think we can all agree that any M&M, regardless of body shape or footwear, would be infinitely more sexually satisfying than Tucker Carlson. That's just a fact. 100%. 100%. <laughs> right. yes. yes. You can put it somewhere. Yeah. It's not. Also, and this is my favorite part, M&Ms are using this idiot, Tucker Carlson, for extra publicity so fucking well. Yes. Great job. <laughs> yep. Following Tucker's complaint about the sexuality and body type of the chocolate mascots, M&Ms released a statement that said, we're going to put the spokes candies on hiatus and we'll have the beloved Maya Rudolph taking their place. And that included their upcoming Super Bowl commercial at the time. But then they just recently came out and admitted the whole thing was a PR stunt and the mascots are not being retired. We might still get Maya Rudolph, who is, in fact, beloved. She's great. Bottom line, oh, yeah. I cannot wait to see the very aggressive sexual antics when the non-heteronormative spokes candies make their big return <laughs> during the Super Bowl. <laughs> please, please be planning to do that. I will buy so many M&Ms. Yeah, I'll buy Spite M&Ms and then just like drop them off at churches that are mad about it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, 
We're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Michael Marshall. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. Seriously, tell your friends. It's really helpful if you're just like, hey, funny show about politics. Tell them about the show. They'll mm-hmm. listen. Yep, yep, it's yep. a very useful thing. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Sarvis, PLS Daddy Me Heath Tongue Emoji, One Eyed Nick, Audrey Arnett, Draj Lynx, Chloe Webb, Alex the Space Ace, Hello Is It Me You're Looking For, The Lionel Richie Factor, Nora Garcia Ruan, Justin Mitchell, Bobby of the East Wood, Unlockener of Worlds, Allison Adkins, and Philo Skeptic, who's Beautiful Dixon vaginas have Clydesdales running alongside them at all times, way more than a Chevy <laughs> Silverado. And whether or not you're yeah. feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.